Hello, Diona and Joseph. So Joseph is a psychologist and healer from Sweden, and Diona is a healer from Holland, and I am a philosopher from Sweden. So I had an idea today that I would just throw something in there that you're not prepared for, and then we will talk about that in relation to personal development. And it is um, gut feeling. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. So the way I think about gut feeling is that um, uh, you can, it's, it's the kind of automatic response that you can get from your body in a certain situation. Um, and it's, uh, the problem with it is to discern what it's, uh, where it's coming from, whether it's coming from a trauma or whether it's coming from like uh, your higher self, if you know what I mean. And uh, when I'm trying to discern myself um, where this gut feeling uh, response is coming from in a certain situation, I, my, uh, uh, my trick is to think, is it a very wordy response? Like, is it trying to tell me, is my gut feelings telling me, I know you need to, you need to get out of there because it will not also remember, then it's coming from trauma. You see what I mean? And then um, if, if I'm just asking my gut, like, uh, uh, should I go home? Should I be here? You know, and, and I get a quick yes or no response, then that is from my higher self. So that's how I feel about gut feeling. So um, from your perspectives, what is gut feeling and how does it relate to personal development? If I may jump in there, um... I can totally relate to people saying it's my gut feeling or when it's a, a trauma response. Um, what I notice with people, actually, when it's a very clear cut answer uh, in a sentence, it's usually emotionally charged, as you say, and it's a trigger manifesting itself as the truth. And it usually comes from another place and, and, and it comes from a very narrow minded, anxious state of being. Mm -hmm. And when it's a gut feeling, it's way more subtle. Uh, also uh, speaking as an energy worker, it has a very, very, very light frequency. It's very, um, it's more in the distance and it, it does not always come in clear cut uh, answers or sentences. It can also be that you want, want something and you ask for it and you hear the word pineapple, for instance, or uh, something else comes up and, and that it's not fully clear. But a gut feeling usually uh, is felt uh, at another frequency, at another level for oneself than uh, where you feel and hear within yourself the trauma response. It's different because that's way more uh, emotionally charged, uh, as I say, fueled with anxiety. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, maybe even more vast or dense, or if you want to, uh, yeah, what, what you want to call it. Whereas the, uh, the gut feeling is, is, is more, it's almost vaporizing. It's very subtle. Mm -hmm. And when you learn to distinguish these, these, these um, appearances, how they, how they occur to you, then, then you can really learn to, to either respond from your gut feeling instead of react from your emotional trigger. Ah, emotional trigger. That's, so that's not gut feeling then. Because the way I feel that a lot of people call it gut feeling when it's really emotional trigger. Yes, yes, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, I, well mm. I would I would say also that uh, uh, the subtle yeah that's that's uh, uh, you, it's like John said here you know it's like the subtleness uh, of uh, of it of it in the, you cannot really see but there is something there then it's a really gut feeling that you can really but and you you have to learn how to to see what's coming here there but. If you see it, it's subtle. It's really subtle in the, in the gut. Yeah, the the trauma is uh, yeah, it's it's very strong. And if I may say so, Joseph, the gut feeling is also it's it can be like a cloud. You know, it's swift yeah. and it passes, 
and it will come back if you let it if you allow it but with the trauma trigger uh, uh, appearing as if it's the truth mm -hmm. and a gut feeling it persists and it wants you to take action instantly it's, it's yeah. impatient and yeah. when that happens yeah. that's different than the urge that's there that can go and come back and fade and has a limitless time because the gut feeling is always there you can always um, listen again and go back whereas the trauma trigger uh, uh, doesn't allow you to mm, exactly the trauma trigger is really really insistent yeah and it just won't leave you alone <laughs> yeah yeah i feel that yeah yeah, I see. I totally see that, and it and it puts you in in a uh, in a defensive mode that you have to sort of. And it's very wordy. This is very interesting from uh, from a philosopher's perspective because we work so much with questions and words and thoughts and and uh, uh, um, finding the right words, finding is uh, the like finding the frame for the question and things like that and we use words all the time and now i just want to jump in uh, my my greatest urge right now is to say be careful with the words be careful with the words and if there are too many words you're far away from the core yes 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 yeah i would say so so you know it's uh, yeah because the 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 gut feeling from the from built on the trauma is you're getting agitated and uh, not so nice maybe or even yeah you are you're very good at uh, arguing your your things you're very clear about it usually but it's it's not that it's kind of uh, it comes from something else mm -hmm. not from real gut feeling yeah and, uh, and uh, that's uh, because that's more subtle. Yeah, it's more subtle. It comes there. It is, uh, and I like that also because uh, it's uh, something. It's something there that you have to feel, but it's there. It can go away, but it comes back. Yeah, and, and uh, you have to 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 explore it. You have to explore it, and I like that. And you have to tune in and listen to it, and it's. Yeah. And another dis the distinction I feel is that it's affirmative and the trauma response is always uh, um, argumentative and negative and it's trying yes. to, yeah, 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 but the gut feeling is affirmative, yes, yes, it yeah. says yes, it's, uh, it's joyful, uh, yeah. yeah. That's a good topic you have there. <laughs> <laughs> And how does this relate to personal development? I guess it's uh, for for me. It it's about um, the first step was to learn to decipher when I when I'm listening, what voice I'm listening to. Uh, yeah, I I wish I had known this earlier. <laughs> um, I, oh, that's good that you say that, Miriam, because usually um, uh, following your gut is something that comes with the years. Mm. We have to learn to fine tune to it. Okay, some people, uh, for instance, with a, with a very specific vocation, they know so, they know from an, uh, from an early age and they follow that, that path and then it's a clear cut thing. But for many people, a gut is something you have to develop and also by learning your emotions first and understanding them and, and, and really exploring that inner landscape. And I think because I was about to say, oh, I wish I also learned it beforehand, you know, about my gut, because it would have saved me a lot of trouble or mayhem. <laughs> but it didn't. It just comes over 40, Miriam, I think so, more or less. Yeah, or, oh, yeah thank okay. God I'm over 40. <laughs> yes, thank God for that. That's also what I mean with it becomes so much calmer when you, when you age. Yeah. It's a blessing in a way. I mean, not everything, but this is the blessing that you... Yeah are less swept away and you can trust your feelings and senses and and yeah uh, all sensations that occur way better mm. and when you listen to the affirmative voice you're no longer working with your elbows all the time it's yeah uh, it can be such a struggle for 20 yeah. years you're working with yeah. your elbows and trying to sort of 
make your way in life. I mean, it's yes, and hustle <laughs> and yeah. want to make your point. And uh, yes, and it's funny. Uh, I'm also curious how it is for Joseph with patience, because I know as a healer, um, where people get lost in the spiritual realm or spiritual practices, um, they have that heightened sense of awareness in a way and that's what they strive for but also at the cost of being here so they say oh i feel this and that is connected with that and they associate all the time and they say like oh and this connection it's meant to be and i need to be with that person and i need to do that but that's also in a way a spiritual bypassing because when you're heightening your senses and your awareness, of course you feel more connected. Of course, of course, more happens. But for me, I always take a step back when people approach me like that. Oh, like oh, I had, I had to be like this or it had to be like that. If they go all overboard on that, then I'm like, no, you're actually you're um, you're overdoing it. Then it's not really really what they mean with a gut feeling anymore. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah. How do you see that with people and with, with emotions and when they state something? I I get uh, quiet, kind of staying staying back a bit. That's also, what I do. Yeah. I yeah I get uh, quiet and uh, start to. I get a bit confused, but uh, usually the what are you thinking about? Uh, usually they say, no, it's something. It comes into my my feeling and and what's going on with you they they getting confused but usually it happens that uh, mostly patients they get in touch with their their guts also in the moment where they don't know how i'm reacting also in a way that i'm staying a bit away i'm staying a bit away and and not uh, uh, saying what's what's going on here, uh, and uh, uh, I tell them to 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 get into to there. So what what is it? What's going on here? And I I I I would say something that I touch on my own gut feelings, and uh, usually this this will this will continue for them also to reach down to 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 their own kind of part of the gut feeling because people are not used to to get into their emotions just like that it's a, it's a very difficult part it's a, it's also a part that they've been told not to get into you have to stay very rational you know and uh, it's like emotions are are interrupting the rationality and uh, i said well you can stay in both parts, you know, one is not on the expense of the other, you know, it's, uh, they are both right, uh, you know, and uh, it's a, it's a, it's a way of, of uh, seeing things, you know, and see, see them in different ways. Most people get confused, but it's a, it's a way of also trying to, to see in the confusion what's going on, you know, it's, it's okay. So I say, you know, if you're confused, be confused, but don't be confused by your own confusion. That's uh, mm -hmm. so. Uh, Embrace the confusion because yes. that's where it happens. Yes, yes, that's where it happens. Yeah. Entangle so, the confusion. Yes, exactly. How do you so, do that, Miriam, when you have, for instance, a circle or if you're one on one with people? How, what kind of questions do you ask as a philosopher to get to the nitty and gritty? <laughs> So my way of looking at philosophy, it's really fascinating that this comes up and with confusion and stuff. Um, uh, uh, so as a, as a philosopher and, and looking at philosophy, I, I always say that philosophy can um, um, disperse the fog, you know, and with the uh, philosophy can, uh, with finding the right words, here we go again with the words, right? Can it, You can shine a light on a situation so that even this, this wonderful Sartre quote that says, um, um, even um, even the, the darkest situation you can find words can sort of light it up and and uh, and prove that the situation is thinkable and this is like the the thinkable situation it's possible to think this situation and we can use words to um, uh, to um, embrace it and and um, 
and and uh, see what's going on with the uh, words so there's this uh, there's a swedish um uh, comedian slash political commentator and he has this funny phrase where he says your feelings are hurting my thoughts because yeah, he, i know yeah yeah he was told so many times that you know he offended offended people with the uh, his thoughts <laughs> but um, i love it yeah. yeah it's it's very it's a great way of put uh, putting it because it also shows that when you if you use words to disperse the fog and then uh, what comes in the way is um, a lot of sort of triggered trauma response type narrative and the narrative that's another thing uh, this is this is why it's so difficult because we spend so many years from uh, uh, childhood uh, onwards to through our 20s and 30s <laughs> in my case at least uh, uh, like expanding on the narrative and the story we tell ourselves about ourselves and why things are the way they are and you know why people say certain things and what I'm supposed to what they mean to me and what they say about me as a person and my value and my right to um, speak and and the way I should uh, respond in the normal way you know um, so mm -hmm. so it's very it's funny how these uh, how we can have Maybe that's the next step of this conversation to talk about feelings and emotions. Um, you know, the I'm not sure I get the distinction right, but a feeling, as far as I'm, I think, is something that you have in your body, like a feeling of cold or something. And uh, emotion is a complicated set of values and feelings and thoughts, such as pride. Yes, I agree with you yeah well in a nutshell of course there's more to say about it but as a starting point i agree with you yeah, yeah. maybe that's the next episode then to talk about feelings emotions and uh, personal development yes let's do so yeah. yes can't wait <laughs>